G'day guys, welcome back to the Eagles Corner for a very exciting episode, one that I frankly can't can't wait to get stuck into. Uh, I don't know how much there is to say about losing the wooden spoon clash to Hawthorne in Tasmania by 116 points, other than holy shit. It's funny to think that just 24 hours ago, I, uh, I posted on Bigfooty and I said, there is actually a bit to be excited about for this game. You know, we're playing against a team that we could realistically beat. Um, at, at the time, that didn't seem silly. And uh, not only that, we had a host of young players in the side. So one thing we've been lacking over the last few months is we've been getting battered, uh, but most of the young guys we want to see get, get games and get experience have been injured, um, at least a huge chunk of them. So this game uh, had a bit of excitement about it from the point of view that, you know, Chester was back into the side. We had uh, Hoff, Bazo, and Edwards leading the back line. That was, I was excited to see what that would look like. Jinbi and Chester in the midfield, Long in the, uh, in the forward line. Some of our more talented youngsters playing in this game. And although we were missing a lot of experience, you know, Barass and Darling going out of the side, I thought, gee, what a great chance to see these guys with a bit more responsibility. So it's funny to, to look back at that optimism now, um, just in the wake of one of the worst performances, or certainly one of the worst results um, in Eagles history. I think in my time supporting the club, in terms of what is the worst result we ever had, I, I often think back to against Geelong in 2008 at Subiaco Oval. We lost that game 182 to 47. I'll never forget because I was on holiday in, um, in Holland for two weeks uh, with my family and I hadn't seen any football scores for two full weeks. So I literally didn't know the score of that game until I got back to um, Abu Dhabi after two weeks and checked the score and 182 to 47. I'll never forget the result and the shock of seeing that. Um, and it's funny to think now that this is probably worse than that considering this was against the 18th ranked side in the competition going into that game. So I think I just gotta stop going to Europe, man. This always happens. I don't know how worthwhile it is really dissecting the game. We were just comprehensively slaughtered. Um, interesting stat that uh, sticks out to me is the score involvement stat. So I think generally the score involvements uh, sort of indicate how many players are involved in a scoring chain. So, you know, if you move the ball from the back half to the forward half and seven players get their hands on the footy, I believe that would be seven score involvements or six plus the guy who actually kicked it. It's not a stat that I generally uh, look at on a, on a team basis. You sort of look at individuals to see if they're impacting the game. But in terms of team score involvements, as a team, West Coast, who only kicked four goals, had 13 score involvements. So only 13 players across the entire game who were involved in a scoring chain. So out of context, that might not sound like an interesting number, but by comparison, Hawthorne had 144. So what does that tell us? It just means that every time we scored, it was just from a real lack of structure. So as opposed to when you move the ball smoothly from end to end, you might have 10 score involvements in the one play. Whereas if the ball gets intercepted, smothered, you know, you win the ball back, you push it forward again, you turn it over again. It it means that the scores that we did get were kind of from moments that we had to really, you know, compete for and struggle for. And, you know, the scoreline speaks for itself. But I think that stat in particular indicates how bad the structure was of this game. I mean, that's backed up by the inside 50 count, which is probably the worst I've seen um, with this particular Eagles group. It was 70 plays 29. The biggest jarring difference between the two sides other than, you know, skill level was the work rate and effort. And we know Hawthorne's midfield is actually pretty good for a side that was 18th going into round 10. Um, it's, a, it's a relatively strong midfield and wins clearances, but they only won the clearances 45 to 37, but it was actually the outside, the uncontested battle, where they completely annihilated us. It was something like 112 uh, more than us. Overall, they had 137 more possessions and still out-tackled us, which is just shameful. So in terms of skill level and talent, you know, we went into that game, it's easy to say in hindsight, but the less talented team, and I, I think part of that is injury, okay? We are missing a lot of players, but that problem was massively exacerbated by effort level. And I don't know what to put that down to. We do know that there was a bit of a flu going around, and I don't want to be that guy who seems like he's making excuses. You know, 116 points against the 18th ranked side. It's it's shameful no matter way you, what way you slice it, but potentially that's one reason why the players just look flat-footed and didn't really want to be out there, um, which is a shame because this is a game that I think many fans were looking forward to. Are they a little bit burnt out because it has been a tough season already? Um, you know, we're going into most games with 26 available players, and, you know, the last month we We've looked pretty cooked. Uh, our best performance was a seven goal loss against Richmond. We've lost two games by over 100 points. One of them against the, uh, well, the wooden spoon favorite, 
probably going into this game. There certainly wouldn't be any more. The trajectory we're on at the moment is um, is poor. So even if you know you, you did want to give them a bit of a, a, a let off, I guess for if some players are playing sick, you know that body of four or five games there, we've lost two by hundred and um, one of them by seventy points. This has been coming for a while, it seems. I don't really know what to make of it, to be honest. It's uh, I'm a, a glass half full guy. I think that comes across uh, with respect to the Eagles. I'm always looking for opportunities, looking for silver linings, and I don't know who, if there was one really in this game, to be honest. Other than the fact that, you know, the handful of players that I highlighted already got a, an extra game of experience, you know, you could certainly make the case that experiencing that game may or may not have actually given them any benefit. Um, maybe as a one-off, but if this becomes an ongoing thing, then this isn't actually adding anything to their development. It's not like we have much choice because we can't, you know, drop youngsters uh, to protect them and let them develop at their own rate, rate in the waffle because the exact same thing is happening in the waffle too. We can try and highlight a few positives from this game. Um, there were, honestly, I only, only wrote down three. Um, Sheed having two goals and 31 possessions. He, you know, he worked hard in this game, which is good because he hasn't been uh, immune from criticism over the last, you know, few years. I know he missed most of all of last year, but when he has played, you know, he's been very up and down. Um, so this was his best game probably for two years. Petrocelli also had something like 10 tackles which is, you know, a positive, I guess. And the other one I wrote down was Jamison had six clearances, which is good for a guy who's, you know, probably not really ready to be AFL Ruck. Um, and, you know, he's trying hard. Other than that, though, you know, uh, we, we didn't really get too much out of that game. Um, Chessa got 10 possessions. Great. It's true what is being said in the media right now that most coaches don't survive the sort of performances that we are seeing under Adam Simpson right now. And we do have a lot of mitigating circumstances. I'm not going to lose sight of that just because it's getting embarrassing. And this result is embarrassing. Probably the one of two results this year that have been genuinely embarrassing. And I think this is by far worse than the Carlton one. I haven't necessarily lost faith in Simpson. Um, certainly not just off the basis of this game, even though it was deplorable. I don't think he's had a fair run at it, to be honest. You know, there's too much adversity at the moment. But let's just... I'm not going to defend Simpson in this video, but let's just put a pin in that and say, you know, if we were to get rid of Simpson and shake up the coaching staff, A, what would it achieve? You know, we'd still be in the same position with our injuries, etc. We don't know if the game plan he's building towards is a, is a bad one. But more to the point, you know, there's two very clear downsides to um, replacing him right now as senior coach. And those are financial. He's contracted till the end of 2025, I believe, which means we'd have to pay him out. And there is a football de uh, department spending cap. So we can't actually afford to just pay out $2 million and replace him with a coach that you'd want to be a pretty good coach who would have his own cost as well in terms of salary. So there's that very obvious one and B, we'd probably be setting up a replacement coach for failure anyway. What are the odds that a new coach comes in and does any better with the Eagles in the current mess that they are? I would think we'd be setting up the new coach and by extension ourselves for failure regardless. So personally, you know, I, I'm not in the Sack Simpson uh, boat, but that is a growing sort of school of thought out there amongst Eagles fans naturally with the results being as poor as they are. But those are two really good reasons why we, the time is not right just now. The unfortunate position we're in at the moment as well is that we can't drop senior players. And um, I don't like pinpointing individual players and, um, you know, blasting them on this channel. But uh, I look at Andrew Gaff's game today and I am questioning what his role is at the moment because he had zero center bounce attendances. He had 10 possessions, which was the same as Jinby and the same as Campbell Chesser. He only went at 60% efficiency. With the midfield as depleted as it is, you know, previously we've been using him as a genuine inside mid. And the theory that I've heard is that they're kind of hiding him because he's getting exposed on the outside because he's not the player that he once was. So what was his role today? Are we almost hiding him? We're just not in the position right now where we can replace Andrew Gaff on form because uh, there is just hardly anyone left in reserve. And what we're seeing right now is we're being exposed for over the last few years whilst trying to push for a premiership kind of ignoring developing the next tier of footballers on our list. And now they're getting the opportunity and they're getting slaughtered. I'm talking about guys like, you know, Xavier O'Neill, Luke Foley, to some extent, Luke Edwards, but I know he's been injured. I genuinely don't know what's, uh, what is the right move from here. I think we, we kind of need stability to some extent. I don't know if the players need a rest. Again, that is not a luxury that we can afford right now. And we're, we're hopefully getting a few soldiers back over the next couple of weeks. 
But, you know, the, this injury curse that we've got, it's not going away. You know, Jermaine Jones has been one of our best players this year. He's done an ankle now, and he's going to be out for at least a few weeks, you'd think. And then there's uh, Liam Duggan missed the last uh, 10 minutes of the game or something like that with a neck injury. And then Oscar Allen as well also ended the game on the bench with a knee, but not to alarm you, it may have just been precautionary. But we need something to stop the bleeding. Um, as much as I want to see kids in the side as well, I think we're desperate for a Shannon Hearn, Tom Barras, Elliot Yo to come back um, in the next three weeks or so. Because results like today, aside from being embarrassing, are just not getting us any further. You know, a couple of months ago, you know, we'd lose to, to Melbourne. I walk away from that game thinking there were periods of that game where you could see the evolution of what we're trying to do. And today, and you know, against Carlton and potentially against Gold Coast as well, other than maybe a patch in the third term, we're just getting so much further and further away from those positive signs that we saw. I do believe it will improve because it quite literally cannot get any worse from now. Um, you know, I, I thought that 2022 would be our low point. And again, you know, we are experiencing injuries again, so it's not that different to last year, but that result is probably the worst result we've seen. And it's probably the second worst result we've ever had. Um, and you have to go back to, I think it was 1989, where we scored one goal, 12, 18, and Nessendon scored 192. That's probably the only result that takes the cake at this point, but today is probably a close second. So now we've got a six-day break. Um, if there are players that were a little bit unwell, hopefully they get over it. Hopefully, you know, if there is a flu going around, there it doesn't spread to other parts of the squad because we cannot take any more disadvantages because we already suck so bad. On the plus side, I think we've got one more game in between the mid-season draft, so we're likely to have pick one in that and uh, pick up a guy that I think we will take in, Ryan Marich. He's not going to improve us in the short term, but shit, he'd be another player on the list that we actually have for some depth. But yeah, that is my thoughts on the, the recent Eagles game. I think um, if, I think all of us will be struggling to find any positives from that. It's, it's an embarrassing result. Um, I've been fairly relaxed about the bad results this year, but seeing that score line, it's just, yeah. Yeah, we're going to cop it, and rightfully so. Anyway, guys, let me know in the comments what you thought of, um, of this performance, what you agree with, what you disagree with. Um, I'm finding it hard to even smile at the camera right now. <laughs> still love the Eagles. We'll still, you know, watch as many games as I can as the time zones and my travel will allow, but God, that result sucks, man. Anyway, appreciate you guys watching. Let me know in the comments what you think, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.